This is Land of Havilah, John 1b. The religious authorities in Jerusalem have heard that John the Baptist is drawing crowds. They're sending out investigators to find out who John thinks he is. Verse 19. This is John's testimony when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He declared and didn't deny, but he declared, I am not the Christ. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? Comment. There was an Old Testament prophecy in place that Elijah would return, Malachi 4.5. Therefore they asked, Are you Elijah? Still in verse 21. He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? Comment. They ask not, are you a prophet, but are you the prophet? They're referring to the great prophet that Moses said would be coming. Moses said the prophet would be like himself. Quote, Yahweh your God will raise up to you a prophet from among you of your brothers like me. You shall listen to him. Deuteronomy 18.15 Moses changed everything, so the arrival of another prophet like Moses would be big news. It's actually Jesus Moses was talking about, but they want to know if John claims to be that prophet. Still in verse 21. He answered, No. Therefore they said to him, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Comment. Isaiah said there would be a, quote, Voice of one who calls out, Prepare the way of Yahweh in the wilderness, Isaiah 40, verse 3. John says, I'm the one Isaiah foretold who would cry out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Yahweh, or prepare the way of the Lord, verse 24. The ones who had been sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? Comment. To baptize means to immerse in water, Romans 6, 4. Why is John immersing in water? Quote, why then do you baptize? Verse 26. John answered them, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you don't know. He is the one who comes after me, who is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loosen. Comment. John doesn't want to talk about himself or why he's baptizing. He wants to stick with the message that there's one coming after him who's mightier, whose sandal strap he's not worthy to loosen. Forget about me, he says, and get ready for that one. John explained why he baptized at other times. Quote, I baptize you in water for repentance, but he who comes after me will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.11 The baptism of the Holy Spirit will provide the life and light that John mentioned earlier in the chapter. Jesus will baptize people in the Holy Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit will flood in. The repentance that John preached comes first, and it's necessary, but the point of repentance is that we can receive the Holy Spirit and everything that comes with it. Verse 28. These things were done in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. Comment. This took place in Bethany, which from Jerusalem was on the other side of the Jordan River. Later in the book, there'll be a different Bethany next to Jerusalem. Coming up, the day John recognized the Mighty One for the first time. Verse 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Comment. John saw Jesus coming and he called out, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. In the Old Testament, the Jews sacrificed lambs to take away sin. Numbers 28.4 Jesus is the Lamb appointed by God. God will arrange for Jesus to be sacrificed and Jesus will take away the sin of the world. John goes on speaking about Jesus, verse 30. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I didn't know him, but for this reason I came baptizing in water, that he would be revealed to Israel. John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending like a dove out of heaven, and it remained on him. I didn't recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water, he said to me, On whomever you will see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Comment. God told John beforehand that whenever he would see the Holy Spirit descending on someone like a dove, that would be the man. John goes on, verse 34. I have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Comment. Jesus is the Son of God. 
So far in the first 34 verses of the book of John, Jesus is the Word, God, the light, the true light that enlightens everyone, flesh, Son of the Father, the one and only Son, the Lord, the Lamb of God, and now in verse 34, Son of God. Coming up on the next day, Jesus and John will cross paths again. Verse 35. Again the next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he looked at Jesus as he walked and said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Comment. Two of John's disciples heard what John said about Jesus and started following Jesus. Verse 38. Jesus turned and saw them following and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. Comment. Jesus invited them to stick around. Still in verse 39. They came and saw where he was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about the tenth hour. Comment. The Jews marked the hours of the day starting at daybreak, so the tenth hour would be a couple of hours before sunset, about 4 p.m. John's two disciples took up following Jesus late in the day. Verse 40. One of the two who heard John and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother, Simon, and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted Christ. Comment. Andrew's under the impression that Jesus is the Christ. Maybe he heard it from John, from Jesus, or from God. Andrew found his brother Simon and verse 42. Andrew brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is by interpretation Peter. Comment. Jesus gave Simon the nickname Peter, which means rock. That could be good as in solid as a rock, or it could be bad as in slow to learn. For Peter, it was some of both. It seems like Andrew and Peter came to Jesus of their own accord, and they did, but looks are deceiving. God chose them, John 17, 12. Jesus will collect a total of 12 full-time disciples, verse 43. On the next day, he was determined to go out into Galilee, and he found Philip. Jesus said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Comment. Peter, Andrew, and Philip were from Bethsaida on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus was from Galilee as well, the town of Nazareth. Verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Comment. Philip's information is largely correct, but technically Jesus isn't the biological son of Joseph. Mary conceived Jesus by the Holy Spirit, Luke 1, 30-35. Philip was correct that Moses wrote about Jesus, most notably in Deuteronomy 18, 15 through 19, when he foretold the coming prophet like himself. And the rest of the Old Testament is full of lots of subtle and not so subtle prophecies about Jesus, prophecies of greatness and magnificence. So Philip's invited Nathanael to come see Jesus, and verse 46, Nathanael said to him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Comment, Nathaniel's thinking the chances are slim that Jesus is everything Philip says he is. Still in verse 46, Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathaniel coming to him and said about him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom there is no deceit. Comment, Nathaniel doesn't know Jesus, but Jesus knows Nathaniel. John will say of Jesus in the next chapter, quote, He knew everyone, John 2.24, which is a mind-blowing concept. It's blowing Nathaniel's mind that Jesus knows him as we go to verse 48. Nathaniel said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathaniel answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Comment. Now Nathaniel the skeptic agrees with Philip. He's maybe going further. He declares Jesus to be the Son of God and King of Israel. Verse 50. Jesus answered him, Because I told you I saw you underneath the fig tree, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Comment. Jesus says, That was nothing. Wait till you see what else I can do. Namely, verse 51, He said to him, Most certainly I tell you, hereafter you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. 
comment. Jesus says that Nathanael is going to see angels ascending and descending on the Son of Man, which is Jesus. And with that, Jesus just interpreted for the first time Jacob's 1900-year-old dream as recorded in Genesis 28:12. Jacob saw a ladder in a dream. The ladder was set on the earth and it reached to heaven. Angels were ascending and descending the ladder, going back and forth between heaven and earth. God stood above the ladder, supervising the activity. Jesus told Nathanael, He's the ladder. He's the connection between heaven and earth. Angels ascend and descend between heaven and earth by Him. Nathanael will see it for himself. If Nathanael was impressed that Jesus knew private things about himself, wait till he sees that. John 2 is next at landofhavila.net. John 2.